And on behalf of Clan Gael, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to you all. I'd particularly like to welcome the 1977 and the 2006 winning junior teams. And I would also like to congratulate and welcome members of our current junior team and our ladies junior team on, on winning <laughs> along with our victorious score participants from last year. I'd also like to extend a special welcome to our extended and distinguished guest speakers and thank them most sincerely for taking the time and making the effort to be with us here tonight. <laughs> Following exhaustive discussions and negotiations with Dee Forbes, the Director General of RTE, <laughs> I can exclusively reveal here tonight that the RTE TB license fee will not be increased during 2017. As, as you can see from our programme, which is in front of you, we have a very busy and packed schedule, so my address to you will be short. And anyway, I know much of you would rather be listening to the other speakers than listening to me waffling. The, the concept of a reunion for the 1977 team and the 2016 was first mooted in November of last year. And I was in the shop one day and Eddie Mullins happened to walk in. And I was telling Eddie about the, the whole idea of it. And Eddie was thrilled. And he got as excited about it as Eddie can get as excited about anything. <laughs> and halfway through the conversation, Anne joined us. And she said, she asked me if I was a member of the 1977 team. <laughs> and I, in earnest, replied, no, that I was much too young. And Eddie looked at me and he looked at Anne. And he said, there was a pause, and he said, no, it's just you weren't good enough. <laughs> Apart altogether from football, awards and reunions, we are here for one reason. And that's because we're all part of the parish of Drina and Drumlee. We are all connected in some way. We have an unbreakable bond, a feeling that is deep within us. It's our home, it's our place, it's where we sported and played. We are in the world of connectivity, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp. But none of it compares to how the connectivity of home makes you feel. All our speakers tonight will focus on community, the value of community, the value of sport, a sense of place, the value of equipping ourselves with skills to keep our parish very much alive and vitalised. In Clannagale, we have big plans over the next nine months to do our share to help boost our parish. Plans are at an advanced stage to create a lighted walkway around our pitch, which the whole community will have access to and benefit from. We also intend developing an all-weather lighted AstroTurf playing pitch across the road from the existing GA field. This will be available to all the clubs, schools and individuals our emphasis will be very much on inclusion and cooperation with other organisations to ensure that everyone gets maximum benefits. I have to mention at this stage um, the Windmill Farm in Drinus B, who have been very kind in generously sponsoring us to help us towards uh, the fruition of that development. 
Our club is 129 years old. It's our club and it has provided us with many and plenty happy memories. It's part of all of us. It's a club that has borne no success and failure. It reflects life. There is an onus on us, the people in this room, to ensure our club survives and thrives into the future. And that we pass that culture on to the next generation. Thank you very much. Hand you over to Ty Gale, who will act as our MC for the night, and if, if, if proceedings go late, you know who to blame. It's not me, it's Ty. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sean. Um, I'm going to break the tradition completely and keep it very short, because those of you who know me know I'm not short of a word, but uh, I could literally talk all day, but I won't. Uh, but I was just, um, I haven't made any notes, uh, which is again one of my uh, trademarks, but I was just reading the, the, the uh, menu for tonight, and not the, the food menu, but the other side of the menu, and I was thinking about what is written here. When all is said and done, the real citadel of strength of any community is in the hearts and minds and desires of those that dwell there. Uh, a chap called Ever Everest Dirksen, an American politician that we're told. Obviously they don't make American, American politicians today like they did before. <laughs> um, but it's very true what, what, he, what he says here in, in that particular few words. So I was asked to MC the night and just say a few brief words uh, in, and I, I see I'm down here as my, my life with the Scorchers. And yeah, I'm, I'm a very, very proud Scorcher. Um, those of you who know as well know that my strengths lie outside the white line rather than inside the white line. <laughs> and um, uh, I often dream of scoring 3-7 in the West Cork final, but then I wake up and say, no, that wasn't me at all, it was probably somebody else. But uh, the fact that we won West Cork finals, I think, is a, is a strength of the community. Uh, you know, the team go out and do the, do the hard yards, but it's everybody in the community that, that, makes, it, that makes it happen. Uh, as Sean said, the club has a, a very, very long and, and checkered history, 100 and, 159 years. And that doesn't happen by chance. And I suppose, you know, we've had our ups and downs, there's no, no, no denying that. We'd like to have had more successful days on the field of play, but we need to celebrate the successes and sometimes look to the future as well, because the future uh, will be bright, I have no doubt, under the likes of Sean's leadership as chairman, and indeed many people in this room, both as, as players and administrators. Um, for me, growing up in the main street, the GA was a huge part of the community, absolutely huge. You know, that's all we did. It was GA, there was nothing else going on. And uh, whether you liked it or not, you were maybe not forced. I, I was happy to go along, but uh, literally go along was probably my, uh, my trade rather than uh, anything else. But it, it, it is a huge part of the community and I have very, very happy memories of, uh, many of you remember up in Walties Field, tagging out under the, under the famous tree. Um, I think there was only one tree there, but I'm sure there was a few more, but it, it was Walties Field. And also going to matches, you know, meeting outside Nan's. She was my aunt, obviously, as many would you know, but um, that's where people met. You know, there was no such thing as WhatsApp or uh, Facebook or indeed texting, just meet at Nan's and that was it. And there is no truth in the rumour that we, that Drummer League holds the record, the Guinness Book of Records for getting the most under 12s into an escort estate. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure we, we tried valiantly to, to do that on many an occasion because there was probably two cars travelling and 24 players, such as the case of. Um, sometimes people were left behind too, I'm sure, um, because we didn't have transport for them, so. Uh, but it was, it, there were great times. Uh, we had great days all over West Cork, travelling to the, down to the Blackfield as it was then, you know, over to Ballinine, over to Dunmanway, down to Skibbereen, so there were fantastic times with your, with your family and with your friends. And then back to the village, or back to the villages, as Sean said, Drina and Drummer League, so, you know, when we won, why did we celebrate? Um, the convoy would lead from wherever. Um, and the cars and people hanging out of windows, even sunroofs that time were probably a bit of a novelty, but I'm sure we, we managed to get out the side of windows. And back to the village, we, well, before we went obviously as well, we probably called to John V's to get a few crow bangers, because they were, you had to have the crow bangers to celebrate. You couldn't be, you couldn't be uh, just whooping and hollering, you had to have a bit of noise. And crow bangers were a real, real novelty, you know, for scaring crows they were, I'm sure, successful, but they, were, they, they played a much bigger part in the life of Clamagale GA for many, many years. Um, but yeah, literally the convoy back through Drina, maybe some of the older guys would probably stop in Joe Connolly's. Um, in last years I probably stopped there myself. Um, I'm sure I'll stop there again, please God. Um, then back to the village and probably Pat Daly's lorry would be over the turn of the village. And there was a huge battle to get on the back of the lorry. And if you were on the back of the lorry, you were flying. 
because you've been waved to the masses and, you know, take the adulation of the, of the, the crowds that were gathered on the main street. But it was, they were, they were great, great days. Um, bonfires lighting, you know, so, but I'm sure there'll be those days again. Many of you remember some of those, some of those days. So it is great to celebrate um, and to be here tonight uh, with the Scorchers celebrating. Uh, we have a long and proud tradition. Um, the Scorchers are well known all over West Cork and indeed all over Cork City and County. Uh, we need to keep that flag flying. Uh, I'm sure we will. And I hope we have a, a, a great evening. So at this stage, I now call on our first speaker for the evening, uh, Sean O'Driscoll. Uh, thank you, Craig. Uh, good evening, uh, neighbours, friends, cousins. Uh, I'd first like to congratulate the Clonic Gale Club on the theme of this evening, which is all about community. And I have had the benefit in my life to travel the world, and being from West Cork is the most important thing to me. And it's far more important to me than my Irish citizenship. I am from West Cork, and I love being back here, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to come back and spend the weekend again amongst my own. And like many young people who live in rural Ireland, I spent the first 20 years of my life trying to leave West Cork. And I spent the last 35 years of my life trying to get back to West Cork. <laughs> and those of us who live in Dublin and are from Cork, we live in exile. And can't wait for the day when we exit exile. And a very good friend of mine said, and this is a Cork man, who always hosts an exiles uh, drinks reception around the Rugby International. And he said, the best part of Dublin is when you have your car on the nays dual carriageway, point it in the direction of Cork, and you get back to Dublin. <laughs> Rural Ireland has been neglected since the foundation of the state. And in particular over the last 15 to 20 years, most of our towns and villages have been devastated. And my message to you this evening is, don't look to Dublin to solve that problem. No politician and no government is going to solve that problem. That problem will only be solved by people within their own communities doing something about the problem. So plan A hasn't worked for a century and it won't work for the next century. So you need to try plan B. And no matter what walk of life you're in, whether it's in business, whether it's in music, whether it's in uh, sports, it's all about people and it's all about teamwork. And people working together can make the impossible possible. And I want to give you three examples this evening of what I mean by that in the context of Drimmer League. I grew up I went to national school in Drummond League in the 1960s and GEA was struggling very seriously in Drummond League. And our best players went to play for other clubs. I think of Mickey Burns who went to O'Donovan Russell, Kevin O'Donovan, my own brother Kieran who went to play for the Dawnies, and Brendan O'Connor who went to play for St. Nick's and Cork. We lost our best players because we didn't have the infrastructure. And a group of people came together in the late 60s. And I'm delighted to see Sean O'Brien here this evening. And the other people that come to my mind, the other people who come to my mind, unfortunately, are no longer with us. And they are Vinnie Carey, Jimmy Grace the Taylor, Curly O'Donovan, Ned Mullins, and Mickey Bill Collins, who left us far, far to you. They coached us, they cajoled us, they encouraged us, they motivated us. And after games, they take the jerseys home and have them washed and ready for us for the next game. And that culminated in the first victory of an underage, under 14 team when we won the Tom Barry in 1971. And that team formed the nucleus of the 1977 team, which we are uh, recognising here this evening. And I would say they are the people, and they, they were, that was the team that was the cornerstone of what is now the Clonagate Club. 
The second example is the festivals that were held from about 1975 to 1980. And the chairman talked about inclusion. And at the outset of the 1975 festival, there were different parts of the parish and different uh, factions within the parish who wanted to take responsibility for the festival. And the way we got around it was the parish, the ICA, and the GAA came together. And it was agreed at the very outset that the parish would get 50% of any profits that were made, ICA 25% and the GA 25%. And I remember particularly well the festival in 1975 made a profit of 1,750 Irish pounds. Adjusting for inflation, the equivalent figure today is 16,500 euro. An enormous amount of money in 1975. And that money, the parish money, was used towards putting a deposit down on the purchase of what is now the parish hall. And the GA's money was not used for the operating cost of running the club, it was the money that was put down to start the building of what is now the GA Pitch and Drummer League. And the third one is one which is newer and which I'm a great admirer of, and this is the Drummer League Walks. And I think of people like David Ross, Kathleen Keane, who's here this evening, Michael O'Sullivan, and all of their colleagues who have made this happen. And they have put Drummer League on the map. And I meet people from all over Ireland who tell me that they've been to Drummer League, they know where it is, because they've been to the walks. Over the last two years, I've had the benefit of getting involved in a community project that I'm really, really excited about. And Dee Forbes, who will address you later, also uh, uh, is with me on that project. And it's the Ludgate project in Skibbereen. Now, it is in Skibbereen, but it is for West Cork. That is the dream, that is the ambition. And from start to finish, from an idea in January 2015, Skibbereen had the most advanced broadband, not in Ireland, but in the whole world, by August 2016. Building finished, everything done, officially opened. <coughs> and people say to me, that's because you have very good political context. That's why you were able to do it. It was done without one iota of input from any politician, or without a euro of state funding. We applied for state funding, and we were turned down. One of the reasons why we were turned down was it was too ambitious and it would never happen. And that's what I mean by don't look to Dublin to solve the problems of rural Ireland. We've also set up a seed fund, our own seed fund of a half a million euro, and 200,000 of that has now been allocated to five startup companies. And those five companies are employing 18 people in Skibbereen. And there are still 300,000 to be allocated. But you know what? I have yet to see a project coming through from the Drummond League person to look for that seed funding. And I want to throw down that challenge this evening. That 300 is there to be invested. And it's up to somebody from Drummond League or a number of people at Drummond League to come forward with a business plan to get access to that money. When we opened it in July of last year, even though we had no, uh, no support whatsoever from politicians, we had two government ministers who were uh, uh, clashing with one another because they both wanted to open, do the official opening of it. We have had the most senior civil servants down, the chief executive of IDA. IDA has never put an investment uh, into uh, that part of West Cork and Enterprise Ireland. And on the last visit from the senior person from the IDA, they said, OK, you have this amazing digital platform, the most advanced broadband in the world. But what about the skills? You know, our foreign direct investors would be asking us, you know, what is the skill base of West Cork? Now, that's a topic that Sean McCarthy will be addressing later. But let me tell you how we went about addressing it. The start of April, we set up a new website, and it's called talentspace.ie. Remember that, 
talentspace.ie. And we asked people who either were from West Cork, no lo but no longer living there, who wanted to relocate back to West Cork, or people who were not from West Cork, who wanted to come and live in West Cork, to um, uh, get, get on that website so that we could uh, understand what the available skills are. And in seven, in seven weeks, 500 people have registered on that website. And at 11 o'clock on Monday morning, we have the Deputy Chief Executive of the IDA down in Skibbereen and saying, this is the talent, the skill set that's available in West Cork. And it was also the catalyst for a Dublin company to open up a branch in Skibbereen. And in the last three weeks, they have hired five people. And before the year is out, they're going to hire another 15 people. So, my message is very, very simple. Don't depend on any government or any politician to solve the problems of Trimadee. It's just not going to happen. And every town and village in rural Ireland is now looking to Ludgate, looking to West Cork, and seeing how it was done. But it's not just about technology. It's much, much more than that. It's about the people. And the people working in unison with the same objective and as a team. People can make the impossible possible. And Again, Pat Collins may speak to you on this. Trimalik is an opportunity coming up because I know Pat and his sister Noreen and Paul O'Brien and others are working at a music festival at the end of September. This is Trimalik's opportunity. Take it. Enjoy your evening. Thank you very much.